and it's time to thine own self be true. Have you ever found yourself not being true to yourself? Really doing something that was against the grain, not how you really felt. Really with doing something that went against how it made you feel, but you did it anyhow. You put yourself in a spot where you weren't being true to yourself. Earlier today, I was having this conversation with one of my clients. And there was some conflict at her workplace. She wasn't having it. She was upset. And there seemed to be quite the gossip and disruptive behavior going on. And so she held her ground and she spoke her truth and she did her best to navigate what was going on. But in the journey, it was hard for her because it was bothering her and it was eating away at her. And during the experience, she kept saying, I can't wait to get out of here. Or are they going to leave because I want one of them to leave? This person's starting trouble. And she was so frustrated by the experience. And she wasn't being true to herself. Yes, it was a good gig for her. And yes, there were advantages to being there. But the universe, in its infinite wisdom, never wants to see us be somewhere that upsets us, that creates angst, discourse, makes us feel out of sorts. So, ultimately, they parted ways today. But not at the direction of my client. She wanted to stay a little longer. If she was going to leave, like all of us, we want to plan our exit strategy. But I had to pause and say, I got to let you know this. In a way, you made this happen. Yes, I understand. The behavior of the others was disruptive. Yes, I understand. It's not fair. I get it. However, you kept expressing your dissatisfaction for this horrible place with this horrible people. What do we think is going to happen? What about those of you who are stuck in a relationship 20 years, 15 years, 10 years? Keep doing the same thing, but you're not happy. And you're feeling like you're losing yourself. You can't be your true authentic self. You are just staying because, well, it's easier to stay. What's the saying? It's cheaper to keep her than to divorce her, right? So sometimes people stay where they really don't belong anymore. But they don't really make the change. Are they afraid of the change? Fear of the unknown? Is it just easier to keep going? But we, as human beings, are not meant to settle. We've become very well conditioned in settling. And we find ourselves making excuses as to why we can't make a change. I don't have enough money. I can't move. It's, it's not the right time. I, I don't have everything in place. I don't have another job lined up. I don't have a new plan. Ah, God's laughing when we talk about the plan. And we begin to lose ourselves in a series of circumstances and storylines that are so far removed from who we truly are. You have to be true to yourself. And the inside of you will be gnawing and nudging and pointing and doing its best to make you make the change. But you don't, you don't make the change. Take, for instance, when I was in my corporate arena. And it was a great job. I loved the people I worked with. But there was a change that happened that moved us from one location to State Street in New York City. And this all happened right at the time of 9-11. It wasn't the time we wanted to be in the city. And the trip, the experience, uh, the going back and forth, how it impacted my personal life, it was a lot. And I was feeling underneath the surface as well, as much as I had loved the people that I worked for, great organization, that when I had gotten promoted to the role that I had, they offered me $20,000 less than the man that I trained to do the role. And when I asked, well, why aren't I getting what so-and-so is getting? Their reply was, well, he has a family. I'm looking at my boss like, I'm sorry. It's my kid and my cat chop liver. They're not family. I don't pay for them. But 
I didn't say anything. I was grateful for the opportunity. It was such an amazing year with the organization that where I came in at the pay level I came in and where I was ending up a year later, three promotions in a year that was significantly over a $50,000 increase in the course of a year, I wasn't going to quibble about the $20,000. But in my mind, I thought, hmm, that's not right. But I said, that's okay. I'll get there. I'll make it happen for myself. But somewhere in the journey, I believe that bothered me a little more than I let it show. And somewhere in the journey, the shift and the change, the opportunity to grow their company, but now in a different environment that really was just just kind of harsh and who had taken over the company, they didn't have the same thoughts and vision for the company that I had originally signed up for. And not the same thoughts and visions of my boss and his partner, but they were playing nice, but I was sitting there feeling some discomfort. So what did I do? Well, I found a new job. Isn't that what you do? And I found something more convenient, more conducive, and allowed me to relocate. They didn't care where I lived. I moved to Florida. But even then, there was something still not working. And what wasn't working inside of me was, even though I liked the challenge of the job, the job itself, my task and the sales that I was doing and the energy that I was putting out to transfer centers of calls from U.S. places to outside the country. I don't know. I wasn't quite feeling that. I wasn't really feeling the reward at the end of it all. And I was questioning taking jobs from the U.S. and sending them to the Philippines or sending them to South Africa or even to Toronto. And so these were things that were underneath the surface. By no means was it bothering me. It didn't have me all frustrated as maybe some people may be in their spot. But it was still, I was manifesting dissatisfaction. And when you manifest dissatisfaction, when you manifest anything, when you focus on dissatisfaction, it comes to you. And so I, in my new role, in my new job, was really on a good track. But then the universe had another plan for me. And something unexpected happened to me physically that forced me to have to stop. Because how much longer was I gonna, going to keep going? Well, most likely I would have kept going for a while, as we all might. Because even though we have some things that we may not be happy about, we just figure this is what I have and so I'm gonna work with it. But sometimes working with it doesn't allow you to be who you've come to be. So the universe knocked me down. Because on some level, I, I wasn't being true to myself. I was not looking at myself in the mirror for who I indeed was. I, I wasn't a, a person who was supposed to jump through hoops to prove my worth to organizations so they could determine how much they pay me. I really wasn't the person who was here to connect people with opportunities and sell them on the benefits, but not believe in the methodology behind it. That's not who I was. And so I was caught up in what I needed to do in the world, as many of us can be, what I need to do to sustain myself, but I wasn't really listening to some of the thoughts and feelings I had. Hmm. I don't know if I'm comfortable going to the city after 9-11. I don't know if I feel like I should get paid less than someone else. I don't know. And I had these questions. You all have questions inside of you. I had these questions, but I wasn't pausing and exploring the feelings behind it. I just kept going. How many of you are still going? Just going. Energizer bunny. Just go, go, go. And you're going in this energy that isn't really taking you anywhere different, but you're going. Are you looking for change? Are you listening to who you are? You have to be true to yourself. You, 
cannot be to the beat of someone else's drum. To thine own self be true. You cannot lie to yourself. You cannot run from yourself. You know the wake-up call of 2020 was, we couldn't run. There was nowhere to go. You couldn't hide from who you were. You were no longer able to be driven to by distraction, at least for a period of time, because we weren't going anywhere. So you had to look at yourself as who you are and who you've come to be. Earlier today in a session, I was saying just this very same thing to a client. You know, we were like that Michael Jackson song, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. And, and maybe we didn't like what we saw. So we made excuses, we got resistant, we said, oh, I want things to go back the way they were. Oh. But was it really as all good as we thought it was? Yes, I know. There's things we want to have back and a life that has now changed. But change is good. This has been an uncomfortable change, I will say. But we have to change. And as a world, as a society, we weren't changing. And so something came upon the world to get us all to look at the man or the woman in the mirror. Came upon us so that we could look and recognize who we are and not lose ourselves in the distractions of all the activities that we were doing and take better care of ourselves, not take our health for granted, be more aware, be more conscious, and also be conscious of others on the planet and who they are and where they come from and you don't know their story. So in a time where during this pandemic, there were some opposing sides over all topics from the virus to the politics, oh, it goes on and on. But we have to not judge. We don't really know the whole story. We always think we know the story, but you don't know the story. The divine has a master plan. And even though we humans think we're running the show and directing others to follow this path or another, we're not here to convince each other. We're not here to believe anything other than what we believe within ourself. Because each one of us holds an aspect of truth that is a part of the whole truth. An aspect of truth that is part of the whole truth. Your part of the story is your truth. But when we pit each other against each other, when we judge another, when we don't honor some of the key things that our country was founded on. When we don't believe in ourselves, and when we point out everything that's dissatisfactory, everything that's wrong in the world, everything we don't like, every crime that happens, every action of another. You know, when I hear my clients and, and we talk about what's bothering them and what's disrupting them, and I have to say, take a step back. Y you need to be the impersonal observer. You need to watch. Don't let it hook into you. Because it's only hooking into a wound you have. It's hooking into something that's not in alignment with you. Otherwise, you just look at it and say, hmm, what's going on over here? And it wouldn't ruffle you as much. But collectively, over these past few years, We've all been locked up licking our wounds. And so our wounds feel fresh. They feel agitated. We feel like we've lost some control over who we are. But the control is not what we can and cannot do. The real control is the higher self stepping in and allowing it to blend with the personality, blend with the ego allow the personality to be its own unique expression and yes you're entitled to your opinion and yes you can feel what you want to feel but the higher self comes in and says we need to temper some of this <laughs> you you can't just be this bundle of emotions and feelings of what's wrong in the world you have to govern those thoughts and emotions because if you do not then that will be all that you attract into your space into your experience you need to be aware. 
if something's going on, there's a part of you that attracts that for your looking, for your recognizing, for you to develop your awareness. And the more you focus on it and the more you bring it in, then the more it impacts you. And yes, there are things that happen that are the collective consciousness, not everything is you attracted it. You might not attract something that happens to your household or your family specifically. But there's a collective fear that's out in the world now. There's a collective waiting for the other shoe to drop energy. And we're all trying to settle back into trying to feel like the way we were. But was that really healthy? If everything was roses, we wouldn't have had a shakeup. If everyone was coming from a place of love and light and truth and listening to their higher self, we wouldn't have going on what we have going on. And in the midst of whatever's happening, remember, you have to be true to yourself. You have to know who you are. And you have to take the time to recognize who you are, discover who you are. Invite the expression of your higher self to merge with your personality and be open to a higher guidance. So normally if you would react a particular way when someone disrupts you, taking a breath, not reacting, asking the question, what does my higher self, my true self want to do? Your personal self might be really agitated. But your higher self will say, there's more to this story. Don't engage. It's a time for you to move forward. And knowing who you are in a time of the world where there's great uncertainty. But one thing is certain. The light of God never fails. There'll always be a path before you. And you can choose the path of light. Or you can choose the path of illusion and darkness and uncertainty. And for one minute, if you're on the wrong path, you can recognize it and change. It's not written in stone once you find yourself somewhere you don't want to be. But understand that it's a collective group of energies and experiences that you've been focusing on for a while that brought you where you are. I've had to say to many people, what's the common denominator you are? And in that moment of you being the common denominator, everywhere you go, you seem to have a similar problem. So what can we change? Because are you creating from disappointment and then of course creating a new disappointment? Is there something going on within you that you're not listening to? That's trying to get you to change, but you don't change. You don't pick a new career or pick a new type of relationship or stay by yourself for a period of time before you jump into another. And so you keep repeating the same things. And life begins this circle. And you don't know who you are. Because you're being reactive. You're going from the place of where you've been rather than where you are now and what you desire. And the recognition of what it feels like to be in that desired outcome. Who you are is a mastery of emotions and intelligence, of feelings and experiences. Who you are is divine. The you you've come to be is an expression of divinity in motion every day. And the people that you've attracted in your life, all of them, the good and the difficult, the spectacular and loving, and the triggering and problematic, they're all a part of your story. A part of a story that, in the end, is beautiful. Because every aspect of the story gives you an opportunity not just to grow, but to learn your truth. To recognize who you are and what you bring to the table. And how in your own unique way, your personality can express the divine. And take you to a place that humanly is not even possible to imagine. 
because if we were to see our destiny in the eyes of the divine, we wouldn't even visualize it to its fullest because our visions are restricted by what we've known and our experiences and what we've been told and how we view ourselves as a human and our own self-worth. But the divine sees us as only divine. The divine sees us as perfect. The divine sees us in truth and light. And the divine sees a magnificent outcome, regardless of what you've attracted. Because each aspect of experience is a stepping stone to your greatness. <laughs>